This is a first in a series of EWT predictions compared with experimental results. And this first one is going to be on neutron decay. And if you watched the previous video on EWT predictions, one of it was based on satellite experiments that could be conducted in the future that might be far up from Earth. Well, in this particular case, we're going to compare results against a mission that was already conducted. But first, the prediction from EWT is that there will be a variation in the time that it takes for a free neutron uh, to decay, and it would be shorter compared to Earth if it was conducted uh, closer to the Sun, such as Venus or Mercury, and that it would be longer the decay time for the neutron if it was conducted further from Earth, such as Mars or beyond. And on Earth it's about 15 minutes or so for a free neutron to decay, and that's a neutron that is not within a, an atomic nucleus. So neutron decay, let's just do a quick recap first before we talk about the experimental results. So again, free neutron. When a free neutron decays, it becomes a proton, an electron, and an antineutrino. The decay time frame of a free neutron on Earth, uh, using the bottle method, and I'm not going to cover the difference of, of methods of the bottle and beam, uh, bottle method is uh, roughly 879 seconds, which is about 15 minutes. Now, let's get into experimental results and see if um, one day maybe EWT's predictions can be true. And so we're going to take a look at NASA's messenger satellite, uh, which did a Venus flyby. And although this mission might have been conducted a while ago, 2007-2008, um, come back to how long it takes to be able to interpret some of that data and when a paper was published next. But first, let's um, go over what the mission did as MESSENGER flew by Venus and on its way to Mercury. It had a neutron spectrometer and it was able to detect neutrons that were ejected from, from Venus. Cosmic rays hitting the atmosphere, ejecting uh, neutrons. And it's able to capture some of these neutrons and measure the decay. Fast forward now, many years later, more than a decade later, and Johns Hopkins published a paper on the analysis of that data, almost like a large bottle experiment, but essentially using Venus and Venus's gravity as a, as a large bottle experiment, so to be able to compare it to what is done on Earth. It's worth noting the satellite did not bring the neutrons with it, so it's a little bit tricky. But again, after studying it for more than a decade, they uh, published this paper. Interestingly enough, the neutron uh, decay time closer to the sun, you know, uh, around Venus's atmosphere, is indeed shorter than what's found on Earth. 780 seconds, which is roughly about 13 minutes. But, and there's always a but, um, they did have to uh, account for potential uncertainties and of course if you're a scientist and, and uh, you know that the neutron has a fixed uh, decay time, well of course you have to be careful about this, and so they did put a 780 seconds but plus or minus 130 seconds of uncertainty. But again, uh, the key here is that the, uh, the average, the mean here, 780 seconds, and it is shorter than on Earth. So let's put this into perspective, because it's not a surprise to EWT, but maybe it's a surprise, and, and you have to put this uncertainty uh, for, for the mainstream science. But let's take a look at the EWT uh, prediction again, which was, uh, ignoring the, the timestamp of the YouTube video, it was pre-2020, before this paper had come out, not after. 
Uh, and you can see the, some of the older videos, or even better, the papers that were written. Uh, but again, indeed it does uh, predict that neutrons should decay faster as you get closer to the sun because it's a probability function of neutrinos colliding with the neutron's center and ejecting that proton and the electron. So no surprise uh, to EWT. Uh, a little bit harder to pinpoint exactly what that time frame should be because it's not just neutrinos from the sun that can affect uh, a free neutron. Um, we are bombarded uh, by neutrinos from uh, other sources all around uh, the Earth as well. But it certainly can be predicted that it should be shorter uh, from Venus. I'd uh, be very interested to see the same study uh, from the um, Messenger mission uh, as they analyze the Mercury data. Um, and likewise, I think as we uh, hopefully one day see uh, missions that can report on decay time, uh, maybe uh, close to Mars, should be able to see and expect it to be longer. And there you have it. Um, one of the EWT predictions that I would say is close to uh, probably becoming true. Uh, it's hard, hard to say that for a certain because the scientists put an uh, uncertainty factor uh, in there. But again, as more data comes out uh, from Mercury, uh, from Mars, again, expect it to have more variation.